But first, very important news about the virus today. A study by scientists from the Australian National University says back in June and early July, there could have been 60,000 more people with the virus than had been officially tested positive. There's nearly six times more people than the 11,000 who had been picked up at that stage. Now, if that ratio holds true today, we could have, in fact, not nearly 30,000 people who've had the virus, and most of them recovered, that's the official figure, not 30,000, but closer to 200,000. I should add here, of course, a word of caution, here is one of the scientists who did this study, Deputy Chief Medical Officer Nick Coatesworth. This is where the interpretation of a single study needs to be qualified, of course. This was only a sample of 2,990 patients. It was not the whole 25 million Australians. So the real number could, of course, be much lower. Or it could be much higher. Now, before I tell you why this is so important, why it's in one sense good news, let's go through what these scientists did. Now, the normal test done by governments look for antigens, essentially the virus itself. And after you're well and truly cured, they are not picked up. Plus, people only get tested in this way if they feel sick, and many don't. My son was telling me at his university overseas, a whole block of students were tested positive by some sort of fluke. And it was a shock because 90% of them hadn't felt sick at all, and the others, just mild illness for just a couple of days. And then there's, of course, people who don't even want to be tested, even if they do feel sick. They don't want the hassle. They don't want, you know, the quarantine. Maybe they want to keep working, whatever. So there are big holes in the testing we do today. But there is another test. It's the one that these researchers did. It is for antibodies. Now, that's the body's reaction to an infection. And it's slower to pick up the virus when you first do get infected. But it will tell you whether you were infected. And it will tell you that long after you do get better. That was this test. Now, in fact, there is a similar test, less sensitive, that you could do yourself at home every day, if you were allowed to in Australia. Here is one of them, an antibody test kit produced by BioHit. BioHit is a Scandinavian company, and this one uh, is distributed by Hoff Pharma um, and approved by America's Food and Drug Administration, tested by Harvard University, blah, blah, but banned from sale here, which I think is crazy. Now, it works like this. You get uh, a little stabber, you stick it in your finger, and then you get some blood, you've got to tease it out a bit, mine's not really flowing all that well, and then you get that blood in a little pipette and you stick it in the tester. A little bit more would help, there you go. And then you add a little bit of the solution, just a couple of drops worth, where did I put it, here, and in about 10 minutes, isn't that beauty? You don't have to wait forever. In about 10 minutes, you, two drops, one, two, in about 10 minutes, you should get a result. And what a sort of relief that would be, right? I mean, it's not perfect. If you, whatever the result is, do double check it. But if you use this, you could get peace of mind if it turned out that you have had the virus because you could assume that you now had some immunity and you could go off to work. And your bosses wouldn't panic about being liable if you get sick. Like I said, it's not perfectly accurate. Always double check the results. Now, so what is the significance of the result of the more sensitive test the ANU used? That, and the result, that there could be six times more Australians who've had the virus and recovered than those we actually know about. And I think it comes down to two things. One, the virus is much less deadly than we thought. So don't freak. And two, we should not not actually be so obsessed by how many people are infected, like Victoria is. You don't base your strategy on that number because it's so unreliable. If you test more people, you will probably find more infections. Then you think, oh, we've got to close the joint down. And then if you don't test that many people and you don't, uh, even if you think you're clear of the virus, right? Oh, we've got the test, you know, the, the level of infection's down to nearly zero. 
you'll probably find there are in fact dozens of people out there who do still have it but don't feel sick and haven't been tested. You can't really be sure because you look at the virus coming back in New Zealand after three months of no cases, they thought they were virus free. And you can't keep these horrible lockdowns forever just in case. The economy was already smashed and people are jack of the mans. So I think the overall conclusion here is that what actually counts, as I've said from the start, is not infection numbers, but deaths. Stop the dying. It doesn't matter if a whole block of students get the virus if they don't even know they're sick. Stop the dying. And that means, above all, stop this virus from getting to aged care homes particularly. Three quarters of our deaths were there. Isn't that a disgrace? Eight more today, all from aged care homes, none anywhere else. And I also think we should be careful about anywhere, really, where people are already old and frail, hospitals, disabled care, people who died in cancer wards in disabled care. And that's not just my opinion. You know, the, the bans on the young, fit and healthy lift them, they're too harsh. That's what one of the doctors behind this study said. Victoria's bans are just too tough. The numbers just don't justify it, which is right. But which politician really listens to experts like that or talks down this obscene panic? Now to this coronavirus, oh, I forgot you've probably been in tenterhooks for the last half an hour. My result, there it is. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I haven't had the coronavirus. One stripe, I'm safe. Wouldn't you like to be able to have that sort of information at your fingertips? Unfortunately, your governments know better than to let you have that freedom. That's Australia for you. You can get it in America, can't get it here.